Hello, Eva here with Eva LaVey Arts, and today I will be playing with the Silks Acrylic Glazes and this gel press plate that was sent along in our design team box. And I'm sure many of you are familiar with jelly printing, but I will be using this to do some mono printing on some index cards. I'm taking part in the index card a day challenge, so I'm going to take this opportunity to experiment with my Color Art Silks acrylic glazes and see how they do with the gel press plate. So I'll just be applying the paint to the gel press plate with a palette knife and I'm starting off with some sunflower and some ginger flower and I'll just spread that around with my mini brayer and then I'll grab the first card and pull my print and it's as simple as that and for the next print I'll grab some pink anthurium and some Mediterranean blue I'll go ahead and pull my second print here and these silk acrylic glazes give such a beautiful shimmer it's hard to tell on the camera but trust me it's there and it's beautiful right now I'm adding some African Jade and before I added some Guatemalan green so I'll just spread that out and I'll grab a texture card from Faber-Castell just to create some stripes. For the next print, I'll be adding some Key Lime and Mango Mamba and also some Teal Zircon. I'll spread that out with my brayer once again and I'll grab a little piece of some rubber mat that goes beneath a rug to keep it from slipping so I can get some interesting texture on the plate that will show up on my print and you can use lots of everyday objects found around the house with the gel press plate to create some really interesting prints. And I'll just clean the plate with a baby wipe and start with some Love Struck and also some Boysenberry. The next print I will use ginger peach, plumeria, and some sunflower. And this time I'm going to grab a paintbrush and just use short strokes to create little marks rather than using the brayer to spread the paint. Now I'm using a paintbrush to draw some shapes onto the plate with some pink anthurium. Now I'll tell you right now this didn't work as great as I thought. I should have let it dry before I added this Mediterranean blue because all that ended up happening was that the colors mixed because they weren't completely dry. So I ended up with kind of a muddy mess. <laughs> Next I'm adding some sapphire blue and mediterranean blue, or sapphire and ice, sorry, and mediterranean blue. And then I'll lay the stencil on top and you'll want to apply really good pressure, which I did not do. So I didn't get a real clean print, but that's okay. I'm going to be using lots of layers anyway. So next I'll take a clean up print. And that one turned out pretty neat. 
Next I'm using some olive vine and key lime in the middle and on the outsides I'll use some Guatemalan green. I wet it with a spritz of water just to help it spread a little easier. And then I'll lay the stencil on and take it off just so I can get a little bit of that design on the print. And next I'll just add some sunflower and then take the texture card again and create a little design that I can pick up on my next print. Now my camera cut out, but you missed a few prints that I did in browns with the chestnut brown and also I believe it was autumn leaf. So those turned out pretty. So I'll just do a quick cleanup with the baby wipe and then we'll take a moment just to flip through the cards that I've done so far. And this one was actually a cleanup print that I just wiped the brayer off, but I decided to go ahead and keep it anyway because <laughs> it was pretty. And you can see where I had accidentally placed a baby wipe on this one. So it actually came out with some pretty cool effects, but uh, accidental. <laughs> so it's looking good so far. I'm really happy with the way the glazes have been working uh, with the gel press. So I have placed a stencil over the clean plate and now I'm applying the sapphire on ice right over the stencil. And when I pull it off, that pretty design will be on the plate and you will see it there on the print. Very pretty. So now I'm going to attempt to get a clean up print with some oyster, which is like a white. And I'm not sure if it's quite dry enough, but I think it may be. So we'll take this print and it gave it at least a nice pretty shimmer. I'm not sure if it worked exactly like I was hoping it would but nonetheless I'm happy with the results and I'm going to repeat the same process laying a stencil on the plate and then applying some sapphire on ice and teal zircon this time right over the stencil. I'll remove it clean it up a bit with a deli paper and then get my print and this is a very strong color so it does cover up quite a bit of the previous print but still very pretty so we'll do this again with another stencil this time I'm using some snapdragon and instead of covering the whole plate I'm just putting it sporadically around This time I'll lay out some autumn leaf and ginger peach, spread that out, and place a stencil on top. And when you do this, you'll want to make sure you apply pressure where all the holes are and you'll get a good print. Next I'll lay a stencil down and apply some black ice and then I'll remove the stencil and pull the print. 
The black ice has a really pretty look to it because it's black but it has multicolored mica in it so I just think it's gorgeous. This time I'll apply some sapphire on ice and Mediterranean blue in some stripes and I'll just run the brayer horizontally so that I can try to keep those two colors in the print. Next stencil is more of a focal image, so I'm using some teal zircon and black ice, which I thought mixed together would give a patina kind of print. Next we'll add some plumeria over this flower stencil. And then place that in the middle of this print. So basically I'm just looking at the prints that I have and deciding which ones might need a little extra. So I'm getting some teal zircon and placing it over this stencil and thought that would look good on a brown background. Next I'll add Love Struck over the top of this doily mask and very carefully pull it up and pull my print. Now I think what makes the jelly printing especially beautiful with the color art silks acrylic glazes is that they are transparent so it really allows for those layers to show through and you can really build up some beautiful prints. Not to mention the gorgeous shimmer that the mica in these paints provides when it just plays off the light. It's just gorgeous. That's something else I really love about this product is that the shimmer is subtle. It's not distracting. It's not taking away from the artwork, it's really just adding a little extra oomph to it. So I'm just showing you all the prints that I've pulled here and I'm just extremely happy with the results that I achieved with the silks and I'll definitely be using them again because I just I can't get enough of them now. <laughs> So I'll have all the products that I used listed below as well as a link to the gel press plate. I'll be using these backgrounds for my index card a day challenge that I'm taking part in over at daisyyellowart.com. But you can also use jelly printing for backgrounds for cards, scrapbooking, art journaling, basically any mixed media project. So. I hope you had a great time watching me today and I hope you'll give this a try as well. Thanks so much for watching. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and share with your friends. Leave me some love and be sure to check out all the other artists over at the Color Art Design Team blog and YouTube channel where you'll find daily inspiration with all of the beautiful color art products. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the Color Arts channel as well as my channel at Eva LaVey Arts so you'll never miss a video. Thanks again for tuning in.